This past week has been a long one in the fight world with many important fights. So here I am to tell you everything important that happened this week. So without wasting any time, let's start. I'm the Indian accent guy and you are on the fight book. The fight week started with the 8th episode of Tough 32. Its first round is finally finished and we have got our semi-finalists for the featherweight and middleweight tournaments. These are the current standings of the featherweight tournament while this is the middleweight tournament bracket where you can see there is only one fighter from team Shevchenko and three from team Grasso. So this slaughter guy needs to win the semi-finals to make an even finale. On Thursday morning, E.T., WBO's number 8 ranked heavyweight Justice Honey faced his fellow countryman Troy Pilcher in an undefeated versus undefeated bout. 1-8 to eight underdog Pilcher applied plenty of pressure in the first round but it was 25-year-old Honey who ended the round with a nice body shot. Honey then took control in the second round, landing a damaging left hook to the head before pushing Pilcher into the corner. He continued his aggressive approach as he laid on the punches with both hands, ultimately needing the referee ending the fight with 40 seconds remaining in the round. It was an emphatic win in his home city where he proved that he indeed is the best Australian heavyweight. His record stays perfect and now moves to 10-0 while Pilcher drops to 9-1-1. Thursday night was Karate Combat 48, where Sam Elby successfully defended his Karate Combat heavyweight title against Antonio Arroyo. Alvi dominated the fight for three rounds, ultimately winning by TKO ground and pound at 2 minutes and 33 seconds in round 4. With this victory, Alvi solidified his position as the top heavyweight in karate combat, showcasing his impressive skills and determination in the pit. The 38-year-old got kicked out of the UFC after being winless in his last nine fights in the promotion and since leaving, he is undefeated in his all five post-UFC fights. He is quickly becoming the face of karate combat just like Mike Perry has become the face of BKFC after leaving the UFC. In a thrilling feature bout in Karate Combat 48, former UFC bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling faced off against JJ Wilson. Sterling, known for his lightning-quick submissions, emerged victorious by points in the overtime round. Former champ champ of one championship, Rainier de Ridder was seen fighting in the undercard of UAE Warriors 51. He also emerged victorious by a round 1 TKO. Report says he is still in contract with one championship, so don't know what the F was he doing there. Do you remember Otto Wallin who got TKO'd by Joshua in December? He is IBF number 12 and WBC's number 15 heavyweight with 27 and 2 record with 15 knockouts. His only two losses came from Joshua and Fury. He also fought this week and he needed just 48 seconds to demolish Honoriode Avariam in the first round on Friday night in Atlantic City. Wallin connected with a straight left to drop Avariam who couldn't continue. With that kind of statement comeback, you can expect him in the bigger cards in the future. And then the biggest boxing event this week was Queen Barry's Joyce vs. Chisora. After being hurt in round 8 and looking exhausted, 40-year-old Chisora returned to drop Joyce in the 9th round with a right hand to the head. In the 10th round, Chisora sealed the victory by landing several hard-looping right hands on Joyce in the final 30 seconds of the contest. The dramatic victory was a unanimous decision win in Chisora's favor with the scores of 98-92, 96-94 and 96-94. In the undercard of the same event, only 19-year-old heavyweight prospect Moses Itauman destroyed former world title challenger Mario's watch by a second-round knockout. Itauma dropped the 44-year-old watch with a series of hard shots, some of which landed to the back of the head. After watch got back to the feet, Itauma finished him off with a follow-up parade of unanswered punches, resulting in referees stepping in to halt the fight. The stoppage occurred at 2 minutes and 30 seconds of round 2. Itauma is very young and already in the top 10 in WBO rankings, where he will go up in the new update, just like his record is now updated to 10-0. 
and then started the biggest event of the week in all combat sports UFC 304 headlining by Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad. The surging challenger took the fight to Leon straight out of the shoot, putting him on the canvas in each of the first two rounds while showing quicker, more dangerous hands to race out to an early lead. After the champion worked back into the fight in the third round by taking Muhammad down, the Chicago native went back on the wrestling offense in the fourth to enter in the final round with a 3-1 lead. And in the final round, Muhammad went right back to the wall, walking Edwards behind the tram line, changing levels and taking him down, working to his back and withstanding the late barrage that left him split open and leaking. The reading of the scorecards was academic as the final outcome was clear with Muhammad earning the win, a sixth straight fight and the UFC welterweight title. Just a masterful effort from the proud Palestinian-American, crowd was booing him the whole weekend and he just silenced them and all of his haters. After the fight, Dana confirmed that there will not be an immediate rematch so it is possible that Shavkat is gonna be his first title defense. Although the ending of the event was an upset, Coleman gave the UK crowd what they wanted. Tom Aspinall blew the roof off Co-op Live in Manchester by blowing through Curtis Blades to successfully defend the interim heavyweight title. This one played out much like his clash with Sergei Pavlovich in November as Blades flashed his power in the initial exchange only for Aspinall to reset, re-enter and topple him with a short left hand in tight. From there, Aspinall unloaded a series of follow-up blows that brought about the stoppage. Aspinall remains the top active heavyweight in the promotion and continues to look like an absolutely elite talent inside the octagon. He has now avenged his long loss in the UFC and continues to keep putting people out each and every time he steps in there. After the fight, Dana confirmed that Aspinall will be the backup of Jones vs. Miocic and will face the winner of that fight to unify the belts. Despite Aspinall's masterclass performance, it was the feature bout in the man card which gave us the best result of the card. Paddy Pimlet secured the biggest win of his UFC career and he did it in spectacular fashion, putting King Green to sleep with a lightning quick triangle choke. After spending much of the frame pawing at each other from range, trading kicks and landing very little of substance, Green shot for a takedown and Pimlet instantly attacked. First, he looked for a guillotine but as soon as he recognized it wasn't there, Pimlet switched to the triangle choke and put Green to sleep. Just an outstanding showing from Paddy the Baddy, who remains unbeaten in the UFC and will find himself in the rankings when they update next week. After the fight, it was revealed that Paddy got the double of the already doubled post-fight bonus and a new six-fight contract. There was a prelims fight that is also to be talked about. Muhammad Mukhaib and Manil Kaap got into it earlier in the week, wanted to get into it in the ceremonial veins and had to be separated before their fight began on Saturday and then, when it was time to fight, they didn't do a whole lot of anything, really. There was a problem while loading content. Please try again. Neither man threw much in the opening stanza with Kaap landing the best shot of the round one in the final seconds, while Mukhaib was the more effective of the two in the second round. In the third, Mukai was solid early with Kaap landing a flurry of elbows off his bat before the two ended up clinching along the fence at the horn. While the scorecards were added up, it was Mukai that came out ahead earning the unanimous decision to remain unbeaten and register his seventh UFC victory. In the post-event conference, Dana White revealed that Mukai's contract with the UFC is finished and they are not resigning him due to his wrestle-heavy style. It is maybe the first time in modern UFC history when someone loses his job by winning seven straight fights. UFC 304 ended. But the action continued with Clarissa Shield trying to become the heavyweight champion. 
If there were any questions about how Clarissa Shields would fare at heavyweight, she crushed them just as she did Vanessa Lepid journeys on Saturday night. After establishing the jab to start piecing together combinations in the first round, Shields produced a ferocious second round. The fireworks started when Lepid journeys made the costly error of rushing Shields against the ropes. Shields responded by ducking and dodging everything Lepid journeys threw at her, only to catch the Canadian with a right hand to the temple for the first knock. Now, Lepid journeys would slowly get up off the canvas, only for Shields to rush her this time and absolutely sit on an overhand right across the jaw to leave the Canadian in a heap for the second knockdown. That vicious knockdown prompted Lepid Joanie's trainer to get up on the ring apron in preparation to throw in the towel, but Shields saved him the trouble by knocking her down for the third time, forcing the referee to stop the fight. The Goat became the new WBC heavyweight world champion and also picked up the vacant WBO light heavyweight title in the process. After all that, boxing legend Manny Pacquiao took on a 7-feet Japanese kickboxer Rukia Anpo in an exhibition bout. It was an extremely tough watch, with the Filipino legend being beaten up for the large portion of a back-and-forth encounter. Despite counting well in spells, many fans' unofficial scorecard scored Ampo in front who towered over his rival and boxed from range. The contest was scored an official draw by default, with no official judges present ringside. Pacquiao has been in talks to make an official pro return and challenge Mario Barrios for the WBC welterweight title, but now fans are pleading for him to hang up his gloves. After all of these big fights, the fight week ended in Japan where undefeated hometown favorite Ginjiro Shigeoka was making his second title defense in front of his own people just like Leon Edwards, and he also disappointed his fans just like Leon Edwards. Filipino Pedro Teruran stepped on the gas pedal for the get-go, attacking the hometown favorite to the head and body. Shigeoka overcame the early onslaught and landed shorts of his own but visually got winded down by the Filipino as the rounds went on. Shigeoka looked ready to go in round 8 but nevertheless made it to his corner when the stanza ended. A barrage of unanswered punches forced the referee to halt the contest the following round, earning Teruran a TKO win at the 2 minutes and 50 seconds mark of round 9. The win improved Teduran's record to 17 wins and 4 losses with 13 knockouts, recapturing the world title he lost years ago. Shigeoka meanwhile dropped to 11-1 with 9 knockouts. So this was the short recap of everything important that happened in the past week in the fight world. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, you know what you are supposed to do. So do it and then do whatever you want. 